to District 50. My name is Nikki Pierce and I am the health aide at Harvard Junior High. I would like to spend a few minutes to discuss the similarities and differences between influenza and COVID-19. Topics I will cover include signs and symptoms, how long before symptoms appear after a person is exposed or infected, how long someone can spread the viruses, how the viruses are spread, who is at higher risk for severe illness, the complications, what constitutes an emergency, the approved treatments, how to prevent these illnesses, and the vaccines associated with each virus. All information and some of the images I am presenting to you today were obtained from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's website at www.cdc.gov. The signs and symptoms for influenza and COVID-19 are mostly the same. Signs and symptoms can vary ranging from no symptoms, you may have heard of this referred to as asymptomatic, to severe symptoms. Someone may notice one or more of these most common signs and symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, headache, or vomiting and diarrhea, which is more common in children. According to the CDC, COVID-19 seems to cause more serious illnesses in some people. COVID-19 has also been known to present with the loss of taste or smell as an additional symptom. Because the signs and symptoms of flu and COVID-19 are so similar, it can be hard to tell the difference between them based on symptoms alone. Testing may be needed to confirm the diagnosis. Later, I will also discuss when to seek emergency treatment with both illnesses. It is important to know how long symptoms may take to appear after exposure or infection to help understand the importance of quarantining after exposure. With both flu and COVID-19, one or more days can pass between the day of exposure or infection and when the person starts to experience symptoms, if any. With flu, symptoms will typically develop within one to four days, although most will show symptoms within one day. Whereas with COVID-19, it may take two to 14 days for symptoms to develop, most commonly five days after being infected. If an infected person is asymptomatic, they could still be contagious. We need to be aware of how long one can spread the virus so we can better protect ourselves and others. For both illnesses, it is possible to spread the virus to others for at least one day before experiencing symptoms. Most will remain contagious with influenza for about seven days. Typically people with COVID-19 are contagious for 10 days after symptoms begin or after testing positive for those that are asymptomatic. Influenza and COVID-19, like many other viruses, are spread from person to person in close contact. As I'm sure you've heard, close contact is described as being within six feet of another person. Droplets are made when the infected individual coughs, sneezes, or talks. Those within six feet could then inhale those droplets and potentially become infected. It is also possible for droplets to transfer between individuals through human contact, like shaking hands or high fives, or touching a surface. The healthy person may then touch their face, specifically their mouth, nose, or eyes, and become infected with the virus. It is key to remember a person may spread the virus before they begin to show any symptoms, when they are experiencing very mild symptoms, or if they never develop any symptoms. According to the CDC, although it is much more common for COVID-19 to be transmitted through close contact, there is evidence that people have infected others that were more than six feet away. Small droplets and particles containing the virus can linger in the air for minutes to hours. COVID-19 has shown to be more contagious for certain age groups and populations. Also, the CDC reports that it has been observed that COVID-19 has more super spreading events than influenza. This means the virus that causes COVID-19 can quickly and easily spread to a lot of people and result in continuous spreading among people as time progresses. Those at higher risk for influenza or COVID-19 resulting in more severe illness and complications include older adults, people with certain underlying medical conditions, and pregnant people. Unlike COVID-19, influenza presents a higher risk of severe illness to the otherwise young and healthy children. 
school age children that become infected with COVID-19 are at higher risk of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, otherwise known as MIS-C, a rare but severe complication of COVID-19. Both flu and COVID-19 may result in the following complications, pneumonia, respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis, cardiac injury, multiple organ failure, worsening of chronic medical conditions, inflammation of the heart, brain, or muscle tissue, or secondary bacterial infections. Those who get flu will usually recover in a few days to less than two weeks, but some people will develop some of the previously listed complications. Additional complications associated with COVID-19 include blood clots and miss C. Sinus and ear infections, for example, are moderate complications from flu. Pneumonia is a serious flu complication that can result from flu itself or a secondary infection of a virus or bacteria. Seek immediate medical treatment for children if you observe fast breathing or trouble breathing, blue colored lips or face, ribs pulling in with each breath, chest pain, severe muscle pain, dehydration, not interacting normally when awake, seizures, fever above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or any fever if the child is less than 12 weeks old, returning or worsening fever or cough, or worsening of a chronic medical condition. In adults, seek medical attention immediately if you notice difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, persistent pain or pressure in the chest or abdomen, persistent dizziness, confusion, or inability to arouse, seizures, not urinating, severe muscle pain, severe weakness or unsteadiness, returning or worsening fever or cough, or worsening of chronic medical conditions. With influenza, just like always, if you have any symptoms that are severe or concerning to you, call your medical provider for guidance. Seek medical attention immediately if a person, a person is showing any of these signs or symptoms while ill with COVID-19. Trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion, inability to wake or stay awake, bluish lips or face. Again, any symptoms that are severe or concerning to you, please call your medical provider for guidance. With COVID-19, when seeking emergency care, call 911 or call ahead to your local emergency facility. Be sure to notify them you are seeking care for someone who has or may have COVID-19. With both flu and COVID-19, treatment for people at high risk of complications, such as people with asthma, diabetes, or heart disease, those with the severe symptoms, or people who are hospitalized should include supportive medical care to help relieve symptoms and complications. As with any infectious illness, infected individuals should stay home and avoid contact with others. The hospitalized or high-risk individuals with influenza should be given the F Food and Drug Administration, or FDA-approved prescription antiviral drugs. However, with COVID-19, remdesivir, an antiviral agent, is available under Emergency Use Authorization, or EUA, but is not yet approved by the FDA. The National Institute of Health's guidance on treatment of COVID-19 will continue to be updated as new evidence emerges. Studies are in progress to learn more. The CDC provides a lot of information here to help prevent illnesses such as COVID-19 and influenza. The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed. Remain at least six feet from others whenever possible. Cover your mouth and nose when around others. Wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. You may use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if soap is not available. Avoid crowds, especially indoors. Stay home and isolate yourself from others when sick. Routinely clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. Vaccines are another way to prevent getting sick. Vaccines must be approved by the FDA or authorized by EUA before use. Multiple influenza vaccines are approved by the FDA and are produced to protect against three to four viruses anticipated by scientists to circulate each year. Currently, two vaccines are authorized and recommended to prevent COVID-19. 
Local health departments determine how these vaccines are distributed. Remember to wear your mask, don't touch your face, keep your distance and wash your hands often. I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Stay safe and healthy Harvard. Hashtag Harvard Rising.